2014 has welcomed the start of the inaugural Camel Toe Trans of Northland. Participants gathered in the heart of the Herakano Valley and began their adventure across 12 kilometers of the toughest terrain their vehicles would have encountered so far in their lives. They have set a record of 5 hours. The camel toe was dreamt up by Marty and Lance over steak sandwiches and banana splits at the local autobahn. The criteria for vehicles was decided. An everyday car mum would drive to the supermarket and take it over mud tracks and sand dunes usually only attempted by four-wheel drive enthusiasts and motorbikes. No SUVs or off-road type vehicles were allowed and it had to be purchased for less than $500. The route was set which would lead participants across a ridgeline giving spectacular views down to the west coast and native forest and giant rock faces to the east. Four participants entered this year, and many more spectators in four-wheel drives joined in the adventure as support vehicles. Due to the environment we were traveling through, there were safety measures in place with each vehicle requiring a fire extinguisher and multiple first aid kits were spread amongst the group, these were not needed at any stage. All vehicles were able to be driven out under their own power, and the weekend overall was a success, a jolly good time was had by all, following is footage of some of the shenanigans that happened on the adventure. The hunt was on to find $500 shit boxes. Trade me was scoured for many weeks and produced the following participants. Representing Japan in Herakano Drift, we have Marty in his 2 liter 1990 Subaru Legacy all-wheel drive, which he purchased for $350. Next we have representing Mamu Rewa in Test Tickle, Ned, in his 500cc 1966 Fiat Bambina rear wheel drive purchased for $250. Next on the start line representing Italy in Genitalia, Lance and his co-pilot Diana van Krauten Schminoff, also in a 500cc 1966 Fiat Bambina rear wheel drive purchased for $250. A late last minute entrant, after careful consideration from the board, allowed the entry of the off-road motocross category. We have representing Rewa Hard, Dents, on Bog, a 50cc 1976, Honda Nifty 50. The flag fell, and all participants were on their way. Unfortunately testicle was struck with mechanical issues early into the adventure. After a helping hand from both Genitalia and Herakino Drift to get up the hill, testicle had to head back to base after losing first gear due to the enormous power output from her 17 horsepower engine. The field was now down to three. Soldiering it up to the ridge line. All three meandered their way through the twisting turning bush. Pushing their vehicles maneuverability and agility. The track was a mix of dirt and soft sandy straits, with a minefield of mud holes and tree roots.
Bog was a tough participant, reaching maximum speed along the straights, trying to keep momentum for the hill climbs. This however, took its toll on its rider, with multiple spills trying to keep the power of the nifty 50 under control. White knuckles and ring clenching, held him to his seat for the most part of it. <laughs> Participants reached their first steep sand section, which had been cut out by rain and previous vehicles. Bob managed the climb with a little help and possibly a piggyback up to the top. Next to attempt the climb was the brave Genitalia, throwing all she had at the hill. After several attempts, the climb proved too much for the 17 horses trying to jump out of her two-cylinder engine. She pulled to the side to let Herrika no drift past. Herrika no drift bolted for the hill, hammer and tongs making it past where Genitalia had made it to, and continued up around the corner where a rock thwarted the descent. One buckled rim later, assistance from Gary and the Dingoes, in the loser cruiser helped them to the top. Genitalia was assisted to the top by Martian and Michelle, in Black Betty. The gay lifesaver jeep from Baywatch. He honestly... Looks like a Baywatch vehicle with that orange thing on top. You know, like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Those Californian Baywatch lifeguard things. It is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> awesome. Viva Italia! <laughs> He's already beaten up that it goes pretty good. Yeah. He's <laughs> not exactly sitting back. <laughs> The trek continued across the top, with participants having no time to look to the sides to admire the spectacular scenery. Every inch of road ahead was examined for holes, ruts, tree roots, rocks and fallen nifty fifty riders which could block their path. Oh shit! 
<laughs> oh no! <laughs> nice one! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> the first mud hole was reached. Bolg and Genitalia tiptoed around the side. Black Betty roared at the hole like a hippopotamus towards the last drip of water in Africa. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> she fastly became bogged down, following in the mud hole. Oh, Martin, you got stuck! Oh no, <laughs> it bent his bar. Yeah. Not That's not the first time. <laughs> Maybe backwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you in full low lock? Because your back wheels aren't turning at all. It's not really lock, is it? Gary and the Dingoes used their loser cruiser as a land anchor. About an hour later Black Betty emerged from the hole. Whilst Terrakino Drift was waiting for Black Betty to be rescued, he found an alternative route. The track ahead became progressively worse, with potholes and ruts hiding around every corner. The participants quickly outran the support vehicles, proving their agility and high-powered rally vehicles were no match for the suburban tractors that were trying to keep pace. Soon the bushes appeared to swallow the participants. With the only evidence of them still being alive, the glimpse of their flags hoisted high above their vehicles, floating across the top of the shrubbery, and the sound of the high revving Nifty 50 screaming its tits off.
the summit now in sight, participants would now be put to the test. soft sand through the landscape which appeared to have been used for the set of star wars it was like a strange alien world which they all had to cross a brave little genitalia was thrown into the lion's den first would she make it through An hour's wait for the loser cruiser allowed the participants to take their first glimpse of the panorama surrounding them, and a well-earned break. Gary directing the dingoes 500 meters behind, after a nasty gash in the sidewall of one of his tires. The downhill descent now lay before the participants. Hurricane Drift bravely went before Genitalia and descended the summit with little issue. Once in the clearing, Genitalia fought her way back to the front of the pack. Down the hill the pack descended, past the shocked and bewildered campers out onto the wild west coast. It was now the final high speed sprint back to base. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Unfortunately, Bog had become a little breathless, and was rendered assistance from the dastardly Marty. In Hurricane Drift, it did not go so well for Bog and Dents. Instructions to stay on the hard were forgotten, and Bog was dragged into the unforgiving soft sand, where all hell broke loose. After a gathering composure, the journey continued. The last challenge for the day was getting to the campsite. Genitalia gave it her all to try and get up over the hill. After a little assistance from the dingoes, she crept her way over the top. Next, Bog was assisted by Dents, Dane, and Lance, stretchering her up over the sand dune. And finally Herakano Drift, gave the hill what for, and clambered over the top with minor assistance from the dingoes. Yeah, if you want to help, give it a hand, that'd be great. Tired, battered and covered in dust and dirt, hugs and cuddles were exchanged and everybody settled into camp for the night. Jolly good times were had, fresh snapper were caught on the torpedo, and an attempt at floundering produced four flounder, and a screaming jang when an eel touched his leg. He screamed like a schoolgirl. Car pie. Mmm, clutch smell, maximum. <laughs>